What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I have three stories about people being tested for those cheeks. A lot of people think it's a myth, especially on the West Coast, but you come on down to the East, or maybe a little bit down South, you're going to see young white guys that have no kind of backup in prison, them cheeks will be haunted. And I cannot stress enough, before we get into the videos, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, share, notification bell, all that shit. I'm trying to make it to a million, man. I remember back in 2000, stuff be real like that when they be talking about them booty bandits up in the cells. I was yeah, down do. there back in 2000. Let's say about 2000, 2000. I was in- What year you said? 2000. Let's say about 2000, 2000. All I was right. in Sumter County, right? So I'm in something County, and we all just regular dudes, we all just chilling. There was this one inmate, he used to make remarks, and I know we had a couple of women officers out there, so I'm thinking he'd be referred to the women officer, but then he'll be looking like, damn, damn, that bad, damn, this dick. So we had the older lady officer, I noticed that she wasn't working that day. So she wasn't working that day, so the dude made a compliment. Them pull-up bars right there are unsafe, ladies and gentlemen, just had to say that. And this little short little, White dude walks by. So Not the guy right, looks dude. just excited for no reason. So I'm confused. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell? So here it is. He's an older dude and he only like younger, younger, young, younger Caucasian white boys. That's all he likes. That's his preference. He don't care. That's what he wants. He wants him Britney Spears. And he worked in the larger group. So he was aiming at this one dude. So every time that one dude went and took a shower, this dude would run to the shower. And followed this dude and just just stalked this guy. No, he was he worked in a larger room. When the guy gave him his his blues, cause I was in Florida. When the guy gave him his his blues, his his um that's what we call the the uniform. They know your waist side. He purposely made them straight legs. <laughs> Until my leggings gave all the young white dudes that he liked it tight tight jeans. Listen to this, you young white punks out there, man. You're walking into prison. You got homeboy that likes to give you capris. That ain't where you want to be, man. You don't want to go to prison. Now, he ain't had one. He had this one dude. He was knocking him off in the laundry room. Oh. He got one. He was stalking. And there was another dude. He looked like that dude off the Street Fighter game. I remember he was like a Russian dude, not doing too much time. So the, so the black dude. Hold on, man. First off, this guy's got options. He's smashing something off in the laundry room, chasing something else, and then he's trying to mack on someone that looks like the Russian guy from the damn game Street Fighter. There's no way because that guy's a monster. And there was another dude. He looked like that dude off the Street Fighter game. I remember he was like a Russian dude, not doing too much time. So the, <laughs> so the black dude was at the, the Russian guy, at the Russian guy, at the Russian guy. The black dude, I mean, talking about like one of the whole conversation, everybody be like, man, you trying to get your booty. Teaching them how to draw, playing cards, talk about sports. <sighs> These motherfuckers having long conversation and shit like that. So everybody uh, know that, that that he out there rushing dude, he out there rushing dude. Then one day we all go out somewhere, this motherfucker bust out, say he done knocked off the Russian dude. The Russian dude was getting stalked by the dude so bad that the Russian dude gave it up. The Russian dude said, walk right up to that dude and just say, run up in me. Like that. No. And that dude was telling I said, man, we don't want to hear that shit. Cause the Russian dude just wanted to get it out the way. I said, man, listen, some of them motherfuckers you wanna do that shit. That's it. I don't know about this, man. I can't even picture a big ass dude looking like Street Fighter willingly reversing those cheeks up into the tank. He said that he said he just wanted to get it done and over with. Would y'all ever do that? <laughs> you know they're gonna try to take it, so just go ahead and give it up. No. No. That was a powerful one. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to do it that one. But... And five building that roach unit is cubicles. You can go back and forth to each other's cubicles as you please. As long as the laws are not doing no tripping. Roach building. What state is this in? So there's a little chick. Her, she's a guard named Miss Dewberry. She's from the Philippines. It's not Dewberry. So she's walking around doing her roster count to make sure that everybody's accounted for. You remember her? She walks up on a cubicle and two guys are having sex. Mind you, everybody's asleep. 
She starts freaking out and screaming. Everybody wakes up to her screams. And she's saying, get out of there. Get out of him. What are you doing? Stop it right now. Get out they of freak him. out. So they're next to a locker in the bunk. So they open up the locker and they try to play it off like, oh, we're not doing anything. We're just looking for corn chips together. So everybody starts laughing and freaking out. So all around the whole unit, they became the laugh of the whole unit. And anytime somebody talked about two guys having sex, they would say, oh, he was looking for corn chips. I knew there was a reason why you kept asking me for them fucking corn chips last night. Man, that CO wasn't scared. She just wanted to put them on blast. And I've seen that happen before. That brings me to a story. Same exact situation, but this was a dorm and this was in Deep Meadows. Back in the day, it used to be a reception camp. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, the lights came on. I was like, oh shit, it's a shakedown. I was used to the lights coming on in the middle of the night for shakedowns in jail. I haven't experienced it in prison, so I was just guessing. Anyways, lights came on and the intercom with me. Get y'all's naked asses back in bed. This is what you hear. And, you know, I'm all the way on the other side. I'm looking around like, what the hell is this dude talking about? I was fresh into prison. So this whole scene to me and whatever this guy could be talking about just went right over my head. And, you know, in prison, man, rumors spread really quick. And, I mean, I learned exactly what was going on just within 15 minutes. Like three something in the morning, someone ended up telling me, man, that's just how the word spreads. But can you imagine, you know, three something in the morning, about to be breakfast, you're dead asleep in prison. Lights come on, intercom with it, you look to the right because you're the neighbor of the bunk that he's looking at. And you see two naked ass guys flying around the cut trying to get their shit together. Man, I'd definitely be looking for a new bunk after that. Has anyone ever tried to swipe my cheeks in the lockup? <laughs> Let's get a real story going for you guys. Oh, man. I want you guys to very much hear this story, man. If you go to prison, very think about what y'all do, man. Because I I'm did thinking. almost get, you know, man. And it, I got lucky, bro. This Listen to this guy, man. Because he definitely looks like the type of person that get victimized in prison. Especially if he has no friends and he doesn't fit in with anybody. Usually those are the guys that are easy prey because they have nobody to help them. This stuff does happen. It really does happen, man. And all it takes is you being young and white in there, man. So I am in the max custody pod at this time. I'm young and a new cellmate comes in, right? He's a crip, man. I'm in this pod where it's not really politic and I'm new to all this stuff, man. He's coming from a high security prison in Sterling, right? So you get to know each other when um, when a new cellmate comes in, right? I'm sitting on the desk, man. I always remember this. And uh, he tries to make a pass for me, right? And uh, I'm very lucky I reacted how I reacted, man. He actually puts his hands on my, my lap. And I swing and start decking him, right? Like, with everything I've got, like, I know a dude literally just tried to make me a pass, right? And uh, he goes, choo, 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 right? Like, oh, it's a, no, no, no. Like, just like, I don't even know how to handle this situation, you know? So, like, there's bunks, and I'm laying under my bunk, right? After, after you know, this whole crazy, weird situation. Laying man. under your bunk. And this is why I tell y'all not to go to prison, man. So he just looks over at me and says, uh, I'm not going to try to rape you. Guy actually said that to me in prison, right? Crazy. So... I'm not going to sleep. If I have to kill someone, I'm going to kill someone. Pretty much. I'm not. It's not going to happen to me. So the next day, I come out and, uh -huh. you know, thank God. Because I had no idea that he was in part of an organization. He was a different race. I still didn't understand, right, how to handle stuff like that. Unless I was going to kill him if it came down to it. So a uh, white boy actually, you know, recognizes him, man. The white boy comes over and says, uh... That dude's attacked someone before, right? Hold on, is white boy calling another white boy white boy? This guy's fucking lost his damn rabid mind. White man, white male, white guy. Ain't nothing about this shit up, boy. But then again, I'm caramel. The white boy comes over and says, uh, that dude's attacked someone before, right? And I'm like, inside my heart's being like, this dude has actually gone forward and raped someone, you know? And uh, he goes, do you try anything with you, right? The only reason I think he didn't attack me, man, because I think he was going to try to see. He's been in this pod before and done it, and people recognize I think he was trying to really see how people were in the pod. And luckily, I got saved, man. So the white boy looks at me, and I say, yeah, man, he tried. My heart's, like, legit beating on my chest, man. This Dang. dude's already been attacked someone. Like, I could have really been attacked last night. 
and he looks at me. He goes, I was worried to get you out there right now, right? All right, let's put yourself in this man's shoes. You come out the cell, and you got a white guy coming up to you saying, hey, did this guy try any funny business with you last night? Would you tell him straight up what the hell happened, or would you try to hide it? Think you can take care of the situation. Most people probably would take the situation into their own hands and have too much pride to break down. Hey, homeboy was trying to take my cheeks last night. Please help. The prisons I was in, chances are, if the white guy comes up to you asking you that question, you say, yeah, he's been trying to do this to me. He's going to act like he's going to help you. Go leave. Tell his homeboys they're going to be joking the shit out your ass. I've seen some of the most treacherous inmates you could possibly imagine. No kind of integrity. No kind of respect. Just straight damn jokers. He was already recognized for actually doing this, man. So no one had his back. So the white boy walks straight over to my cell, man. I always remember it. Big ass white dude, man. Shout out to him, man. Goes into the cell and closes the door, man. And I just remember hearing the other dude screaming, bro. Don't go to prison, man. I got lucky. Me and Bobby can sit here and laugh and joke about this type of stuff, but this is the reality of the penitentiary. The facts here are if you are young, white, and weak, chances are someone's gonna try to take them cheeks especially over here in the east coast go down to like alabama or mississippi or something man someone's gonna be wagering on them cheeks as soon as you get off the bus but just keep in mind it's usually the individuals that have no kind of support from anyone in the block they're just kind of sticking out like a sore thumb and they don't have no one to hang out with those are usually the guys that get got so even if you're not a part of some kind of organization in prison, it's best to find some friends that you feel like you could connect with and really get close to them because you never know when you might need some help. Until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. Check out all the links in the description of the video. Go buy yourself some Lockdown 23 and 1 merchandise. Support the channel everywhere you go.